Um, I started doing youth research actually in the 90s, in the beginning of the 90s. I was still quite young at that time. And I think it, I've been doing it during these 20 years after that, and you know, and I think it's inherently very difficult to do youth research actually, and to, you know, to, to all the time to try to catch the things which is happening in our times on youth and identity and all those questions. Uh, it's well worth an attempt anyhow, but, but it's inherently very difficult, I think. But someone has to do it. So, so. Uh, I'm going to make two observations. I think when I started doing youth research in the 90s, there were quite a lot of observations on, on media and, and youth and how media kind of transform the conditions for identity formation in youth culture. Uh, and I'm going to make two observations about that. And one of them starts actually from people like Joshua Meyerowitz and also, also Sean Baudrillard's observations about media culture kind of transforming the whole social reality and kind of, you know, twisting the whole way we kind of relate to each other and, and also kind of including us in some kind of simulacra which Jean Baudrillard talks about. That is that we are kind of, kind of part of media, we are kind of, you know, absolved in media and we are kind of, you know, not, we don't have any kind of relation between some social reality and some media reality, but everything collapses into a simulacra. Uh, and I think at that time people were, you know, especially sociologists like me and Martin maybe, uh, were quite skeptical to what Jean Baudrillard said. Uh, but I think, you know, during these 20 years after that, some, you know, time has, you know, caught on and, and some of the things he said actually are quite, you know, uh, interesting to use to reflect upon what's happening today. And I'm going to make one first observation about uh, which connects to Dr. Phil. I think we have, uh, since the 90s and, and onwards, we have, and probably also earlier, we have a massive kind of psychologization of social reality. Uh, what I mean is that psychology, you know, people in the 70s and so in my generation, we, we thought about psychologists and psychotherapists as something very strange. And especially men couldn't, you know, imagine going to a psychotherapist and talk about emotions. But during a quite short time, you know, we have a development where more and more people are going to psychologists, and especially in the whole media culture in different you know, fractions of that. We have you know, psychology everywhere, and people are talking about emotions. So we have some kind of general emotionalization of everyday life, which, is, which media is part of, you know, in, of, of, of creating and, and transforming and implementing in social reality. So we have a, a, a process which has you know, gone on quite a short time, but if you think back and if you try to, you know, to think about it, you know, there is many things that's really happened in this area. And I think today, if you compare with the 70s when people went to psychologists, maybe, today most people think they are psychologists almost. I mean, we talk with our friends and we listen and we look, in, uh, we look at in treatment maybe in television and we, we learn how to frame you know, things and how, what, what language we can use and what concepts we can use and what theories we can use in order to think about emotions and, and what people's, people's problems, so to say. And, and this is a development in a quite short time, I think, where people have become psychologists, kind of. And, and especially if we look in youth culture, in Facebook, in all the medias, in the social media, we can see how this, this is really saturating the whole social media, especially in youth culture, I would say, but also in <laughs> for all the people, of course. Uh, so this is a process which is quite interesting. It's a general process which has transformed our way of relating to ourselves, I would say. Uh, and we, are, you know, we learn how to say, yes, can you, can you explain a bit more? Can you, can you talk a bit more about that? And we have these phrases, you know, I think m many of us actually, which actually comes from a specific psychological culture, which was, you know, very, very kind of uh, secluded before, but now it's more general. So this is the first observation which, you know, says something about you culture and, and culture in general, I would say. Um, and then the other observation when it comes to youth culture is that 
Also in, in the 90s, in the postmodern times, we we're talking about, I, I actually listened to this, this uh, lecture on China and identity development among Chinese youth. And many of the things that guy said really, you know, connected to what, I w what I'm going to say now. Um, but there are also some differences, I think. Um, in the 90s, when we talked about postmodernity and youth culture, we went actually from, from a kind of phase where we talked about the importance of class and gender and how this kind of, you know, uh, forms youth culture and young people's, you know, ways of relating to themselves. Uh, and then we went into the 90s and we started talking about, you know, fragmentation and, uh, and we had, you know, we came up, or different social theories came up with many different kind of concepts in order to capture what's happening in youth culture, like lifestyles, neo-tribes, which this guy, Chinese guy also was using actually, tribes, you know, uh, and there are many different tribes and there are, you know, hundreds or two hundreds or th thousands of tribes in, in and taste cultures, class culture is more old, gendered cultures is more old, but we have this many, many different concepts, you know, which people came up with in order to capture what's happening. And it's all about differentiation in youth culture. And I think somehow we have come back somehow uh, to, you know, a kind of uh, more basic concepts. We are in, in, in research, anyhow, I can see how we're going back to class and gender and ethnicity. But we're more talking today about intersectional patterns and positions. We're actually using the post-structuralist language, post-modern language, but we are kind of connecting it back to material, 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 or I can say, material things, you know, and to class and ethnicity and to these, you know, basic concepts used in the 60s and 70s in youth culture research. So something has happened with the concepts, but we're also going back somehow in order to understand youth culture. And to, to, to just, just this is from Baudrillard. Bye bye. And this is the last picture. Um, so how can, how can we then, you know, put these two different observations together? Uh, one observation is about, you know, general developments in you know, emotionalization, psychologization, a kind of transformation of the general youth culture, the culture, contemporary culture, and a kind of, kind of new mental way of, you know, relating to myself, to ourselves. Uh, and the other observation is about fragmentation, differentiation, and maybe going back to more basic categories. Uh, I think somehow, if we go to, for example, plastic surgery, as an example, uh, which many young people do today, they do different kind of, you know, things with their bodies uh, operating themselves. Um, and there are these programs on television, many different programs like The Swan, and, and many other programs which came after The Swan. And, and it's actually, if you, if you can see these programs, the kind of dramaturgic, dramaturgical kind of um, narrative of the programs, there's often a young woman coming to the plastic surgery and to the psychologist and the team. And this young woman says, I'm not satisfied with myself. I want to find my real self, you know. And then, they, and then the plastic surgery says, okay, I can do this and this and that, and I will, you know, I will, I will kind of take away all this which is not you, and I will kind of bring forward your, your, the real self. Uh, so you take away the fatness, take away all the wrinkles and all that stuff, and bring forward authent authenticity. You know, and, and these programs are also often constructed in the way that this young person in the beginning is, you know, really suffering because of all these operations and all this stuff. And, and time goes, and at the end of the program, this young person, who hasn't seen herself in many months' time, uh, is standing in front of a mirror with all her friends, families, and the, the mirror goes off, and, and she looks in the mirror, and she says, wow! This is, this, is, this is me, this is really me. But the other person which you have you know, worked on, that wasn't me, but this is me. Okay, so somehow the striving of individualization to become more an individual and the collective features of contemporary culture, you know, the collective um, structures and, and movements are actually coming together in this example, I would say. Uh, when people look for themselves, they often end up 
becoming more and more collective in many ways. And this is, I mean, this is the kind of the, the ground structure in talking about youth culture, where you know people want to become individuals, they want to feel their real selves, and they want to be authentic and all this. But it actually often ends up with them being someone else, you could say, the other in society, the ideals of society when it comes to bodies, for example. So that's it.